Founded in 1999 by Jason Burks, Retrospect Films is Oklahoma's largest turnkey production company of its kind. On this podcast, we will discuss the pursuit of creating things and the problems we solve by digging up projects from across the last 20 years and giving you a glimpse behind the scenes where the magic happens. You're listening to Retrospect Films from the Archives. Hello, and thanks for joining us on Retrospect from the Archives. This is our in-house podcast where we dig up projects from the past, and we dance a little bit, and uh, we talk about the problems we solve and all the creativity and work and skills and jazz that goes into these things to make them beautiful. So today joining me is the one and only Maddie Detter. (laughs) <laughs> All the way from, I mean, you live in Tulsa, but you're an international celebrity. Oh, yeah. Across the world. Mm-hmm. But we are lucky to have her here in Broken Arrow <laughs> today. <laughs> um, but your origin, you have origin in Stillwater? Yeah, I went to point. college there. You went yes, to college correct. there. And then did you grow up? Here. Here, like Portugal, France, Southern Italy, a lot uh, of different yeah. places. Our listeners don't know where we're at right now. They don't now. know where that. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> they don't know. Uh, Maddie is the collector of creative ideas. Oh, thank you. Um, the um, let's see, what's another art director? Extraordinaire. Art director extraordinaire. A great graphic designer. One of the only people in the building who appreciates or even knows what the word negative space means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kerning, tracking, kerning, tracking. Uh, you're who I wanted to be because I really should have been a graphic designer. You know, I was so close. What happened? I don't know. It was weird. Like, that's how in in high school, you know, I was the yearbook graphic designer and the newspaper graphic designer. That's how me and Devin knew each other. We worked in there together. And and I and I, I mean, I do. I love tracking. I love fonts. I love negative space. I love composition. And then I got distracted by video and I was able to make a little money on the side with video, and I didn't go to school for graphic design. And it's a school thing. you got to go to school. Yeah. Someone gave you a camera, and then it was all over. It was all over. But luckily, when you came here, it, I lived through you yeah. vicariously. <laughs> so as you design things, I'm like, yeah, I'd like to think I would have done it like that. Yeah, I would have totally done it like <laughs> that. I would have done it just like Maddie. Oh, um, Brandon, your intro. Uh, here, Brandon coordinates here. crap. Yeah, so, All right, onward. <laughs> okay. Move on. Uh, so no, for real though, Brandon, senior producer, um, and you deal with all the things, all the things, all the things. Yes. So, um, this project today that we have dug up from the archives has not been in the archives for very long. No. So not a lot of dust on it. In fact, I just got it on my phone like two mornings ago and I was like, well, there we go. And I started watching all of it. So, <laughs> Hey, their ad buys are working. Their ad buys are working. Um, so we're talking about Reesers, the grocery store that most of you know, if you live in green country, um, We've been doing commercials for Reesers longer than I can remember. A hot minute. At least six, seven, eight years. I don't know. It could even be longer than that. Yeah. I don't even remember, but it's been a very long time. Uh, They were recently purchased by a really large chain out of Texas um, that has, I think, six or seven total brands that they they have throughout the U.S. And uh, so it's been kind of cool because, you know, many times when those things happen, you are like, oh, we're not going to get to do their work anymore. But instead, they they gave us a shot, which has been awesome. And we've enjoyed working with them. This project we're talking about today is unique. It is a I'm trying to think what the name of it is. I know it has Monopoly in it. It's a it's a promotion. It's like the pick three and win. Right. I think is what it was called. OK. Um, and it's something that they've never done before. It's somewhat similar to like when McDonald's does Monopoly, where yeah. like you spend money, you buy their product, and then you get pieces and whatnot. But it's more or less like you just have a chance to win when you're purchasing products at a Reesers. Yeah. So they came to us and said, we want to do this uh, unique concept. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, Forbes? Because you were involved earlier than I was. Yeah. I mean, it was really like, how can we, like they sent us all of the branding and it was very like hush hush, like NDA stuff because this like couldn't talk about it. Um, and it was, you know, here's here's the game pieces, here's all of the print material, here's all the promo stuff. We want to promote. Here's the top five things that we need to portray in the message that it gets across. We need to make a 30, we need two 15s. And then really Taylor was the one that kind of like initially like took all that and then 
built creative, went through multiple rounds of like, we like that, we don't like that, let's try this, and got it to kind of where it was. Um, but from the start, they wanted to implement, like they sent us some things that other brands had done. Um, a lot of it was 3D, and I think we kind of all looked at it and we were like, that just looks kind of hokey. Like mm -hmm. we, what if we tried to implement like the 2D that's printed on all of these ads that they've done and implement that. And we'd had some experience, especially the last couple of years, implementing uh, like live action with 2D animation. Mm -hmm. And it was great and it looked really cool. And so we kind of sent them some clips and was like, what do you think? And they're like, yes, we love it. And so I think Maddie probably, you were animating, I think before creative was even like fully locked in. Yeah, that was uh, the great part about this project was everything was so dialed in just from the beginning, like shout out to you and Taylor, because, you know, those storyboards allowed me to just make animatics and I could start working before the footage was even here, which really, you know, allowed me to rock and roll once it did get did get in. Yeah. Maddie, I'm curious, talk a little bit about th the whole two and a half D animation, flat animation, character creation, rigging, all that stuff. I don't even know what you're doing. I just know that I see it when it's done. <laughs> But um, I do know on this one, like Brandon was saying, that you had started on it earlier. I knew we'd already determined to uh, lock the camera off to help the, the track and match points and all that different stuff. But describe that process. I know that it, it's not – we didn't do the same thing on the um, Royal Gorge. That was different because yeah. we did like we did like hand animation. But um, talk a little bit about your process on this one and what programs are you using? How are you doing it? Yeah, yeah. Um... This was a fun project because I got to use Character Animator, um, which I had a little bit of experience in a couple of years ago when they were first um, like beta-ing it out. Mm -hmm. um, but this is my first time really to dive into the program. And it's really cool because you can lay out, um, like layer out the character of, you know, a certain way that the program will recognize. And then you can like upload a VO and it will um like do the mouth movements it'll track the mouth movements so you're not like starting from hmm. zero it'll like put those visimes in and um so that makes that a little easier yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can set up the tracking if you want to like do the animation and the movements like with the camera um in your computer which is super cool and um do that's you just, what i did do you just render it as an alpha channel and place it mm -hmm. i'm curious on this one and, and I mean, I, I guess I kind of know, but I'd rather hear you say it than me say it. Talk a little bit about the difference between the camera being locked off or not locked off and what factors does that bring to the table? I mean, it makes all the difference. You can you can add the camera movement in post like Cole can, you know, work his magic and make it look great because um, then I don't have to track it. And that takes out, you know, mm -hmm. hours and hours worth of work just to try to get his feet in the right spot to match. Yeah. Especially when he's like walking towards the camera or moving and all of that. Cause that was like, and the other thing that was, you know, and I think what you just talked about, like with storyboards, like we real, like we did get these storyboarded and get those approved before we went and shot because we were able to then, like Maddie said, she just took those storyboards and made animatics and animated because people were interacting with the Monopoly man. So like mm -hmm. as he was talking or popping out, people were looking and reacting that we're having them on set actually like track and mark be like, hey, this is where your eyeline needs to be. And so, you know, trying to make sure we're being like as intentional as possible and get as much done ahead of time and then not move the camera because any sort of extra movement is just like, well, now his eyeline was here, but you moved and now his eyeline's right here. And so like trying to dial all that in, like there was, you know, you're not one to just lock a camera off, which I know that when we told you, we're like, hey, we're going to need to lock the camera off. It you're actually like, still bothers me. I know it does. I was watching the spot <laughs> and I was like, should have added some dynamics. Don't know what they are, <laughs> but we should have added something. <laughs> in the timeline that we needed to get it done, it made sense. We're like, we just need to lock it off and then, you know, add maybe a little bit of camera shake or something, you know, in post or zoom. But I, it turned out great. And like, they were super happy. They like the first like proof we sent, like she was like all like a client was like all caps, like, I love it so much. And I was like, okay, good. And having them on set was awesome too. We've loved working with them and yeah. having like, hey, you know, Here's the storyboard. Here's the frame. It in like hey, it looks identical to it, you know. And then we can kind of dial stuff in and figure out, you know, we are picking what 
you know, we're promoting for them to sell. There's like three major brands that are like the major sellers for them. And so they wanted to make sure to feature those. And so we were featuring those, um, choosing all of that, you know, making sure and we, the casting was awesome. Like we had like the perfect people, um, couldn't have, I don't think they, they were just thrilled with the, the, the people. And then the 15s that we did, one of them was just all animation too, which was a little different. Yeah. For well. the most part. Mm-hmm. I did have that animated section, which yeah. was fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one part that we kind of skipped over, but, you know, the actual shoot. Yeah. Um, and I will say some things that stood out to me. I mean, directorially, I felt like this was not complex. Mm-hmm. You know, we did have to think about where this little guy was going to animate. So there was like spacing things and framing composition things. But we're talking about pretty short shots, yeah. you know, of celebration or shopping or whatever. Um, you know, one unique factor is we did shoot this on the C500, yep. which, you know, we just bought a few of those, which has been really fun having a full frame camera that has a beautiful image. Yep. It's been a, it's been a second um, and not, you know, not just like a 5D or something. Um, but I've really, uh, it was funny because when we very first started, you know, I'm, I'm so inclined to open the lenses. Yeah. And that's what I like to do. And I remember the first setup we did, I popped, I think, like a 35 or a 50 mil on there. And I cranked it open to like 1.3 or 1.2 or something. And it was like the depth of field was too much. Yeah. Like it was so shallow that I was like, oh, my gosh, this is like actually hard to look at because everything is so out of focus. It looks like a green screen. Um, and... I almost forgot what that environment was like because we just don't shoot on full frame as much, uh, or at least we haven't in recent years. Um, so I actually ended up like shutting the lens down to like 2.8 or yeah. somewhere between 2.8 and 4, which was weird. I was like, this is hilarious. And then both, you know, the handful of times we've been using that camera, I keep closing it down because I'm like, I need to have a little bit more in focus. Well, especially when you're like, I know I, I have to have a, a, a flat 2D. And he's in like, focus. He has to be in focus. So like, like you're, you're trying can't... to think of the depth of field between the, the characters and him and, yeah. and it makes sense. But I, I we didn't overnight this. What do we, what do we, I can't even remember. We, just, we, we called at like 4 a.m. Yeah, okay. So and they then, opened at uh, 7, yep. and then they were going to be really busy by, like, 11. And so we're like, okay, we can get in at 4, and we essentially have from, like, 5 to 11 yeah. to, like, capture everything, and then we need to be gone otherwise. Like, because they have, you know, a salad bar, and, like, people will come in there to get lunch. And yep. I was like, yeah. But we chose, like, their least busy day to, you know, try to make it easy. But um, it was it was really nice being in there and especially in the first couple hours because we just did all the st- all the shots that were going to be in the aisles first and yep. then we had a checkout area that was designated for us that was like shut down that we were able to kind of take over yep. um and then shoot some exterior stuff that you know it's the middle of winter right now so it's not pretty so cold made the the trees look pretty yep. um but yeah it was we were going to overnight it, but I'm glad that we didn't. <laughs> oh, yeah, like full overnight. Yeah. Um, just a few more details, and we can wrap it up. Uh, the the casting, we had like five, six, seven people. Yeah, so originally it was 130, and then we would cut. Um, 115 was, like we said earlier, was just sol- like solely animation, so we yep. didn't have to worry about that. But the other 15 was a, a using those same scenes but just cut up quicker. Um, but what the – client wanted to do is actually instead of using those same people cast Mm -hmm. all new people and so we ran every scene for the 30 we ran it through twice with Mm -hmm. two different talent whether it was um an age difference gender difference like all of that to just try to like differentiate which is like it totally makes sense because if you're watching you know if you're seeing the same thing repetitive on social media or television right you know if some little nuances will break that up and you'll be like, oh, wait, I thought this was the same one, but it's different people. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, we did the casting, had to do uh, video auditions because they were, you know, supposed to be able to react to something that's not there, which, right. you know, there's a lot of people <laughs> that are just really good at just, you know, oh, we just need you to shop and look happy. But then there's like, we need you to shop and then react to something that's not there and have a good facial expression. Right, right. So, especially with kids. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, last thing, even though I'm jumping all over the place, but uh, Maddie, I'm kind of curious, you know, as we were bringing it to a close, talk to me a little bit, uh, not just about the character. We talked about the guy in there, Mr. Monopoly, but the typography. And then also like the, I'm kind of curious, even though I don't think you did it, but you probably had a hand in the order of it, the color grading of the footage, because you have footage that's getting color graded, but you have graphics that are separate. And I don't even know the timing of how those things come together when this thing finalizes. So tell me just a little bit about the the type and the placement of the type and the end screen and all that, and then just that process of completion with coloring. Yeah, so as far as the type goes, there really wasn't a whole lot of secondary, like there were a few secondary graphics that I pulled and just, mm-hmm. you know, try to put them in fun circles, make it look like um, their print stuff. And then yeah. I incorporated some of their um, like print ads that'll be in the store, or, you know, various places um, throughout. So. Um, there wasn't a whole lot there. As far as the color grade goes, um, I mean, we talked about it and we just wanted something bright and fun. And, um, you know, we had been try a couple of things and we landed where we landed. Does that, you know, and I don't know if it does because I've never thought about it. Does that affect the 2D elements or are they just separate and then you just try to like be in the same tone or something? No, it really didn't. The first shot where he's like popping out of that sign. Yeah. Um, with the VFX, like we kind of had to work together on that one, but the rest of them, there, there yeah. was no issue. You probably just try to make your blacks match or something like that. Yeah, that's cool. Well, very cool. Well, I think that concludes this episode about this cool little research spot. We should fire a couple of them off and watch them. Hey, you, are you ready to win big? Races Monopoly, pick three and win, offers a chance at over $2.25 million in prizes. Collect a game ticket every time you shop. Plus, bonus tickets on select items. Win instantly in stores and play online. The more you shop, the more chances you have at rewards, like $100,000 in cash or free groceries for a year. Win big today with Monopoly at Reese's. For official gaming rules, visit our website, Reese's.com. I won. Reese's Monopoly! Everybody grab your grocery list. Research stores have never looked like this. It's Monopoly time. You could win today. Come out to Research and play. Well, hopefully you will go to Research and play Monopoly at Research, and maybe you'll win a million dollars or a vacation or something. Yeah. Uh, if so, just give us a call. We'll take a commission on that. No big deal. Ten percent. Ten percent. Not a big deal. Uh, we, if you enjoyed today, uh, feel free to check out any of our other episodes. We've got over thirty episodes of our podcast on our website. Uh, retrospectfilms.com. They're also on Spotify and on Apple Podcast. Just talking about tons of projects and lots of fun filmmaking that we have accomplished over the years. So, uh, hope to see you on a future episode, and we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.